The Caribbean islands stretch almost 2,000 miles from the Florida Keys to the coast of South America. So many pirates and explorers, privateers and admirals pass this way that the islands are like a roll call of the nations. Here are America, Europe, Africa, Asia. In this, the oldest part of the New World. Today, in the fifth century after the voyage of Columbus, the islands are still in the process of discovery. This is the world of the beachcomber. Legend has it that Robinson Crusoe once passed this way. It is the world of the explorer, too. Columbus found no gold on these islands, but there were the greater treasures of blue skies and trade winds, of sweeping beaches on tropic isles. Spaniards, then, were the first to set their stamp upon these islands. From this house, the Alcazar, in the present-day Dominican Republic, Spain ruled over Columbus's discoveries in the New World. Here, the Spanish version of his name marks the final resting place of Columbus in Santo Domingo. The church was a prime force in setting the Spanish imprint on these islands, Hispaniola, Cuba, and Puerto Rico. came in lesser numbers, but their lush tropical islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe are today integral parts of France herself.
even tiny Denmark set her stamp upon the islands. The United States bought the Virgin Islands from Denmark in 1917. The U.S. Virgin Islands are famous for their shopping. They comprise a free port stocked with duty-free merchandise from every corner of the world. In the Dutch West Indies, Curaçao and Aruba, Bonaire and St. Martin, the architecture blends Holland with the Caribbean. By an ancient edict, the houses are painted in many colors to soften the brightness of the sun. In Trinidad, somewhat in the style of Buckingham Palace, the changing of the guard evokes the long British tradition of many of these islands. Jamaica and Trinidad Tobago, Barbados and Antigua, Dominica and St. Lucia, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the British Virgin Islands. Trinidad's people come from just about everywhere. The island is a trip around the world in itself, a conclave of the nations and races of man. The Hindu shrines attest to the coming of East Indians. The Muslims too came this way across half a world. Sugar brought the early settlers to the Caribbean islands. Once the predominant export, it is today one of many. Copra, cacao, pineapples, bananas, coffee, and spices of all kinds are among the crops of the islands. Landmarks of the Caribbean are the ruins of long abandoned sugar mills. To many visitors, the prime vegetation is to look at, not to eat. The Divi Divi tree bends to the prevailing trade winds, as here on Dutch Aruba. They are living weather vanes that prove the year-round favorable winds. The Caribbean trees are uniquely varied, among them the cannonball tree. the tall traveler's tree. The giant red balazier is but one of thousands of tropical flowering plants that bloom the year round. The silk cotton tree gets its name from the obvious similarities. The bird sanctuary on Trinidad is refuge for the white egret.
the rare scarlet ibis is another inhabitant of this domain of land and water. Great tropical rainforests and jungles and mountains rising from coastal plains characterize the islands of Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Dominica, Martinique, and Guadeloupe. But the essence of the islands everywhere is the great shining tropical sea that is the high road from one island to another, never more than a hundred miles away. This is English harbor, Antigua, when sailed Admiral Horatio Nelson to meet the French at Trafalgar and elsewhere. His old dockyard attests to the once fearsome presence of England. From here and other harbors, Visitors can book schooner voyages to any and all of the Caribbean islands, many of them still uninhabited. Once aboard the lugger, you may play the Antiguan version of an ancient African game. Your journey may take you to Puerto Rico, where Columbus stopped to take on water. Charlotte Amelie on St. Thomas, capital of the U.S. Virgin Islands, is a port of call on the sea road to St. Croix, where the pelicans dive into the deeps. Near here at Buck Island, an underwater realm of submerged trails welcomes a new kind of hiker. This is America's first underwater national park. Fort de France on French Martinique, birthplace of Napoleon's Josephine, and where they began the Beguine. To St. George's, Grenada, 
the Isle of Spices. To Scarborough Harbor on Tobago, an island that changed hands 31 times. And in good time, your schooner brings you to the great floating market on Dutch Curaçao. The world's greatest movable pontoon bridge, the famed Queen Emma, moves aside many times every day to give sea traffic entry to the very heart of Willemstad. This prudent hotel has ship collision insurance. Lunchtime. The great rice tafel, or rice table, is an Indonesian smorgasbord of dozens of hot, spicy dishes. The Hollanders brought it across half a world to enjoy it at home and in their Caribbean islands. The street scenes of the Caribbean islands are easygoing, casual, punctuated by the flowers that are a part of every day. And the language itself takes on the special flavor of light-hearted people in an often heavy-handed world. Sometime during World War II, it seems, an islander pounded out Mary Had a Little Lamb on a crushed biscuit tin. This, tradition has it, was the beginning of the steel band.
Columbus discovered not only America, but the hammock. It was an Indian invention. Thus did Columbus inadvertently stumble on the key to the true spirit of these islands, rest and refuge from the other, outer, busier world. Buzzing away and busy at their own breakfast are the island hummingbirds. Here where the pirate captains of old buried their loot on remote beaches and in hidden caves, the visitor can still find treasure enough of his own. Here where the age of discovery is yet unfinished, each traveler can discover his islands in his way, at the pace that pleases. <laughs> 